Simon Jake, thanks for joining us. Yeah, no problem. Um, your film, The Last Love Letter, has, has just been released. You've had two separate screenings. Mm -hmm. What has the initial response from audiences been? It's been great, been really positive. Uh, a lot of people obviously turned up thinking, oh, here we go, it's another low budget film, and came out. Didn't use the word surprise, but they were like really quite kind of oh wow, but, but what you guys could do with no budget and what you could do maybe with a bigger budget would be just like amazing, which is great. So the feedback's been positive. Um, what was it like to see the last love letter on the big screen? Am I right in saying that you kicked off James Bond in your premiere? We did, yeah, yeah, we kicked off James Bond. We had to get permission uh, to actually take off James Bond for the night because they knew we were going to sell over two screens, the big 300 and the 200. So James Bond, he was second. So. Which was a great, great feeling, but to see it up on the big screen was amazing. I mean, the way that we shot the film was in 4K, which just looks absolutely amazing up there. We shot it in scope as well, the proper look. And rather than having the film on a, on a DVD or a Blu-ray disc, which we did with the last films, we had a digital cinema package, so the quality and the sound and, and the, the picture and, and quality of the sound was just amazing. So really chuffed with it. It's got, the film is about everything, it's got action, it's got drama, it's yep. got romance. What were some of your influences for The Last Love Letter? I'm a big Sergio Leone fan. Huge Sergio Leone fan. I mean, if you watch things like Once Upon a Time in the West, I don't know if you've seen that, Good, the Bad and Ugly, things like that, the Fistful of Dollars. Sergio Leone's always got a mixture of things in his films. He's got the, the, the things you've mentioned. It was the same with Tarantino. And if you watch a Tarantino film, he's got a touch of comedy somewhere, he's got a bit of violence, he's got a bit of this, that next thing. You've got to keep audience on, your, on their toes as well, I think. Yeah, and um, you touched on comedy there. There was quite a serious tone throughout the film. Yeah. And then as it progressed, it maybe got a wee bit... The comedy element kind of came in. Was this something that just felt natural when you were shooting, or was it all something you intended to add? No, I intended to do it, to be honest with you. I, I find that if films get too heavy... The haggis western genre, I'd like to say, is quite, quite Sergio Leone, Tarantino type of thing, where you know... Some of the violence is like a tongue in cheek sort of thing. So I know which scene you're talking about, the hairdressing scene. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, a lot of people have come up and said, oh, we're, we're really kind of serious. And then some bit of comedy came in there. Because the audience don't know how to react to it. Yeah. They think, should I be laughing at what's going on or should I just be kind of thinking, oh, what's going on here? Eh? So yeah, I, I like throwing things in, throw a curveball into the film that people are not expecting as yeah. well. There's a lot going on for your ca character Steve in yeah, the film. Yeah. Um, how different a character was he to perhaps what you'd played before? And did you draw influence from maybe yourself or anywhere else? The thing I like about acting as well is you can do things that you wouldn't do in real life. I mean, you can just go and lose the plot and things like that. And But what I liked about Steve was he was a kind of like just a normal man, just a normal man who was trying to work, to look after his family, and he just... He made a few mistakes and then got caught up in it and before he knew it, it just spiralled out of control. The film is obviously the first in a, a trilogy. Yeah. You've got him and another two coming up. Yeah. It has quite an open ending. Where can we expect to see the characters in oh, the future? A lot of things happen with the characters. The, the second script's ready to go. It's been written. The third one is about halfway through the third part. And there's a lot that happens with the characters. Definitely, It's a darker film, a lot darker. The hardest part was the original Last Love Letter, Last Love Letter 1, part 1, we were trying to introduce the characters, and when you're doing a film, you've not got a lot of time to introduce each character. It's different for a series or a season. You can you can have two episodes introducing the characters very slowly, but in a film, you have to get straight to the chase, straight to what these characters, who they are, and, and, and what they're doing, who they're married to, and this and the next thing. And that's a hard bit. But the second part, I've introduced the characters, the ones that are still living from after the first one, and it's now right. Let's have some fun with these characters. We, we now know them. Let's have some fun. Last off, you've touched on it slightly, um, but where can we expect to see the last love letter in the near future? Hopefully in the, fe the film festivals. Hopefully it will get picked up and we can try and get a distribution deal somewhere along the line where it can be shown in the cinema or we can maybe put it on Amazon Prime, things like that. So definitely it will be somewhere. So we'll keep it up to date with the Facebook page as well and all the news. We've got a new website as well uh, launching in the next few weeks. and It'll have new posters for the last love letter. New videos, we've got behind the scenes video as well happening, so there's tons of stuff going on.